Good morning boys and girls. Over the last few weeks we've been looking at people that have met Jesus. Now through Jesus's few years of ministry he met thousands of people and we've already seen some of those characters that met him, that the lives were changed forever when they met him. Some believed and loved him and followed him, others didn't believe and they didn't change and some um, grew angry and jealous of Jesus and they wanted to actually kill him and so today we're going to meet a man called Pontius Pilate Pontius Pilate and we're at the point in the story where the chief priests had arrested Jesus and they brought him to this man Pontius Pilate to put him on trial to have him killed now Pontius Pilate was a Roman governor so he was very high up he answered only to Caesar and he had power, he had control to decide whether somebody could live or die. They could do this, mm, no. And they, it wasn't like a court of law that we have in Britain where there's a jury. It was one man and he had the final decision to say he lived or died. And so they brought Jesus to this man for trial and Pontius Pilate met Jesus and he asked him lots of questions and he was trying to find out if he was guilty or not guilty and I just want to bring to you a few things today that Pontius Pilate found out when he met Jesus. First of all he saw he was innocent, he was innocent, he said I find no fault in this man at all, nothing, he's done nothing wrong. It also realised that there was something about this man after questioning him and talking to him he realised, he said, it says in um, Verse 14 in Matthew, he says, he marvelled at him. He marvelled at him. Strange. It also says that Pilate was afraid. Pilate heard that some people believed he was the son of God. And it says he was more afraid then. And to add to that, his wife came to him. And his wife said, I've had a dream about this man, Jesus, and I want you to have nothing to do with this trial. I don't want you to be involved. You need to stand back. So he was actually afraid of Jesus and what he might be. Fourthly, it shows that he realised Jesus had power, power. There's a verse that says, do you not realise I have power to have you killed or power to have you released? And Jesus turns to him and says, you have no power over me. The only power that you have, Pilate, has been given to you from above, from God. And after he heard Jesus say that, he really was trying to get him released. He, he was trying to free him. So he obviously acknowledged that this man had power and was afraid of him. Now he knew all these things about Jesus and he got a chance to question Jesus and know Jesus but yet he still had him condemned to death because the crowd were shouting kill him kill him and the peer pressure and the the um the political situation he was in he actually found it easier to have him killed. Um, than it was to make his own mind up really. But you know what? He did something very strange. He got a bowl of water and he washed his hands and he said, this man's blood I'm innocent of. And you know what? That was more of a symbol. It wasn't as he had dirty hands. It was a symbol. He was trying to say, this has got nothing to do with me. You're, you've decided to kill him. I'm washing my hands of this situation. Now, that seemed like a strange thing to do when really he did have the power to say, you can live or die. But he actually washed his hands and said, nothing to do with me. But you know what? The Bible tells us that we can't meet Jesus and wash our hands and say, nothing to do with me. Because in Romans 14, it says that we will all have to give an account to God of ourselves. We will all have to stand before him. And so if you've met Jesus 
And if you've heard about Jesus, and maybe you've heard, like Pilate has heard, some of the things they were saying about Jesus, that he truly is the Son of God, and that he's a king. If you've heard those things, then you have to respond. You can't say nothing to do with me. You might say, I don't believe. You might say, I believe, but you can't say nothing to do with me. Okay, for today's memory verse, we've got believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And that's Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Should we try that again? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. So I hope you can remember that one for next time and we'll see you again.
let's pray. The reading is from oh, Romans chapter 1, Heavenly verse 18 God. to 25. We thank you that we can call you Father. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness um, and unrighteousness of men you, Lord, who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. In to, uh, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, back to you, for God has shown brings, it to them. Um, for since the creation dead, of the world, dead, his invisible Lord, attributes you, you, are clearly um, seen, being understood by the things that are made, Lord Jesus, even his earth. eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because, to, although they knew God, again, they did not glorify him you, as Jesus God, Christ. nor were thankful, but and became futile you in their we'll thoughts, and their foolish hearts you, were darkened. For all those who, Professing um, to be wise, they name, became fools, and, and changed the glory of the incorruptible Lord, God we, into an image made for, like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed um, animals, and creeping and things. And to, Therefore, uh, to know God had also gave them up um, to uncleanness in the really lusts of their hearts life, to dishonour their bodies them. among themselves to remember that. So, who exchanged um, the truth of God we, for the lie uh, and worshipped uh, and served the creature the world, rather than the creator um, who is blessed you forever. Are, uh, Amen. Genuine uh, pleasures and uh, wonderful things to be had in this life and yet Lord um, we so often lose our perspective of how um, none of that really matters. We, our lives, Lord, your word describes as a, um, a a blade of grass. Lord, it's here today and gone tomorrow, Lord. And none of us know when that time will be. We'll be called to eternity and uh, stand before you. And Lord, we know that all we can all we can cling to is is your word, Lord, that tells us that, um, Lord, we'll, we we can be with you and long to hear those words. Uh, come in, uh, good and faithful servant. And Lord, uh, we pray now. We thank you for uh, last weekend and for Sam's ministry and the blessing that was. And Lord, uh, we pray for Sam and his recovery and the, the church down there in Swansea. Um, Lord, and all the other churches meeting um, on this your day. And we pray that... Um, your blessing would go out throughout the land lord we we've heard um so many people um becoming inquisitive to the things of of god and we pray that um lord that wouldn't just um be be wiped from people's minds and they think on other things but we pray that they would be drawn uh, unnaturally lord by your spirit to to you lord we would never choose to come to you but uh, we thank you that you're irresistible Holy Spirit draws us to you. Lord, we pray for uh, the pastor's preaching this morning and um, the word that you've given him to speak to us, Lord. We pray that we'd be attentive, that we would um, have open and ready hearts to receive your word. And Lord, we pray that, um, Lord, we would be changed and challenged and rebuked and uh, encouraged and whatever you need to speak um, to each one of us Lord we thank you that you can speak the same message um, through your servant our pastor and two people hear completely different um, <clears throat> words of what we need to hear Lord one might be encouraged another rebuked Lord and yet we thank you that you have a living word um, and that it's sharper than any two-edged sword um, Lord we pray that that word would cut into many hearts of those listening to this message so we pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. 
greatest treasure. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Blackpool Tabernacle Church again. Trust the Lord will bless you wherever you are today, wherever you're tuning into this. We know there are people listening here in Blackpool and in your homes. We know that there are people throughout the country listening, and we know that a third of the listeners are overseas as well. So wherever you are today, may God bless his word to you, wherever you are, may it be a blessing to you. Now, before we come to his word, I want to pray and I want to ask God to, to, to draw near and bless his word. So let's bow together, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. We believe, as the Bible says, your word is truth and that your word also says sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. So Lord, may you speak to us and convince us today and speak even from your word to us, even as we meditate upon it and hear you today. Be with us now, we pray, 
for your great name's sake. Amen. Amen. May God bless his word then. Well, let's turn to it. I want to come back to John chapter 14 again. John chapter 14. And this statement, you remember we saw last week, Jesus says, I am the way. I am the way. Well, the next statement, he says, I am the way, the truth, the truth. The full statement is, I am the way, the truth and the life. So I think we know where we're going next week, but this week, the truth. What about that, the truth? So the question I've got for you is this. We've asked, do you know the way last week? Well, this week, do you know the truth? It's one thing to say, do you know the way to heaven? But do you know the truth? It's a very, very good question. Pilate stood before Jesus when Jesus said those uh, who, who, who hear my voice of, are, are of the truth. Those who are of the truth hear my voice. And Pilate sort of disdainly responded and said, what is truth? What is truth? Well, Jesus knows that those who hear him know the truth. Do you know the truth? Do you know the truth? There's nothing more important than this, I think, today to consider. I've said this many, many times, and I'm going to say it again. I'm never tired of saying it. I've said it so many times that I, I, I never would stop saying it. And it's this, the greatest thing about Christianity, the greatest thing is it's true. It's true. It is the truth. I remember when I discovered that when I was about 23, when I came to see... You know, I would go around and say, well, well, this Bible's true. This gospel's true. And I was brought up in a religious home and people say, well, of course it's true. But they didn't get it. They didn't see it the way I saw it. The truth had so impacted me. And I realized that all this book says is absolutely 100% true. And that is the greatest thing about Christianity. It is true. You can state your life upon it. It is the truth about God and about everything. The Bible is true. Peter said, we have not made this up. We have not followed cunningly devised fables or stories. When we made known to you the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. It's true. It just happened exactly as the Bible says. It's 100% true. And Jesus said it in John 17. Your word is truth. It is true. The Bible records events, real events, facts of history. It's not made up fables or stories or fake news. No, it really did happen as the gospel writers uh, narrated it and wrote it down under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus himself says this fundamental thing. He says, I am the truth. It was bad enough that he said, I am the way, meaning the way, the only way. But he goes further now. He says, I am the truth. What is he saying? Well, I'll tell you what he's saying. He's saying, I am God. I am God. God, the Bible says, is truth. He is truth. Oh, it's one of the attributes of God that's revealed in Scripture. God is infinite. God is eternal. God is unchangeable. He is all-wise. He is all-powerful. He's omnipotent. God is love. Not that he loves, he is love. God is good. God is just. God is righteous. God is holy. And he is true. He is the truth. It doesn't mean that he speaks the truth. Any more that it means when he says he is love that God loves. He is love. He doesn't speak the truth. He is the truth. A very embodiment of it. Now let me read you some verses from the Bible. Listen to 1 John chapter 5. The Apostle John writing in his letter at the end in chapter 5 verse 20. He says, and we know that the Son of God has come. See the assurance and certainty? We know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. Listen to this. This is the true God and eternal life. You can't get away from that. 
There's a group, you know, called the Jehovah's Witnesses. It's a cult, like many of the cults. It's ironic that they have an, a name for the cult. One of the names they have is the truth. You'll meet a Jehovah's Witness and say, ah, I've been in the truth for 10 years. They think it's the truth. It's not the truth. It's a lie. They don't believe that Jesus is God. They don't believe it. They reject it. Well, the Bible says this is the true God and eternal life. He's speaking about Jesus, the Son, and he says we're in him who is true, we believe in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Oh, the Bible says it everywhere that he is God. In Ephesians chapter 1, Paul says, In him you also trusted. That's Christ he's talking about. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Again, it's the truth. The gospel is the word of truth. What a definition of the gospel. You know, we always used to say that, didn't we, years ago. Tell, uh, tell the truth. Tell the gospel truth. The gospel is true. Oh, listen to Paul in Titus chapter 1. Paul says, God is a God who cannot lie. Titus 1 verse 2. He cannot lie. It's impossible for God to lie. The writer to the Hebrew says that. It's impossible. He just cannot lie. We can lie so easily. God cannot lie. He is just absolute truth. He's the only one that can really speak truth in the fullest sense of the word. Now the question I want to put to you further is this. Do you want the truth? Do you really want the truth? Do you want to hear the truth? Do you want to hear the truth? Surely we want the truth, you say. Surely we want that which is true, not that which is a lie. Not that which is false. Ah, but the question I'm thinking is this. Do we? Do we really want the truth? I'm utterly convinced that we live in a world today that doesn't want to hear the truth. Doesn't want to hear it. It's crazy that, isn't it? Well, the Bible says that's the way it is. And it describes man in that fashion. Certain times in history when it's prominently so. When it's devastatingly so. Listen to, uh, listen to Romans chapter 1. Paul describes it like this. For the wrath of God is revealed, Romans 1 verse 18. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and righteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. They suppress the truth. Look at verse 25. Who exchanged the truth of God for the lie. We had this in the reading. Who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshipped and served the creature Rather than the creator. Oh it's a terrible thing. Exchanging the truth of God for a lie. Who suppressed the truth. Is that really so? What is he saying? He's saying they'd rather have a lie. I'd rather have the lie. I don't want the truth. They believe the lie rather than believe the truth. So many would rather have the lie. How about that? That's what the Bible says. Oh, listen. Don't you know the lies that are around, that have been around for thousands of years? Let me remind you of some of them. God does not exist. There is no God. God does not exist. Even though the Bible says, the fool has said there is no God. But God does not exist. God did not create everyone and everything. Oh, God is not in full control of everything there isn't a god who's in full control of everything or another one all religions are the same all religions are the same they all lead to god we all worship the same god or oh, jesus is not god just mentioned one cult that teaches that many teach it he's not god he's not the son of god he's just a man that's all he is he didn't die on the cross as another Oh, he didn't rise again from the dead. Of course, he didn't rise again from the dead. Have you heard the, the latest one that people have been saying for decades now? Jesus didn't even exist. Don't you know that? He didn't even exist. Was there even such a person as Jesus? 
No wonder the Bible says people suppress the truth. No wonder the Bible says the God of this world, Satan, has blinded their minds. So they do not receive the truth. They're unable to believe the truth. They'd rather listen to him who Jesus called a liar and the father of lies. He's the greatest promoter of lies. If he's behind anything, it's false. It's, it's, it's a lie. It's a deception. Oh, but it's even worse. Oh, it is. It's worse. Because it's God who ultimately co commits man into this position. So that man, in a sense, is, is not only unable to believe the truth, but actually God enables him to believe the lie. How about that? God who ultimately causes man to believe the lie, God does that? Aren't you preaching the gospel where we want people to believe the truth? Of course we do. And yet you're saying God causes men to believe a lie. He does. There's a passage in the Old Testament, I don't want to turn to it, where, where God sends a, a lying prophet to them. The king was a bit wiser, he recognised the lie, but not everybody recognised it. It's God's judgement. God who speaks the truth allows them to be deceived. One of the problems we have today is false prophets that Jesus prophesied. False messages. They're not the truth. It's a lie. But the people are, are, are believing it and rushing after it. But it's God's judgment on a world. Now why does God do that when he wants us to believe? Well it's because they've refused to receive the truth. They've refused to believe the truth. And because they have refused to believe the truth, God then finally uh, judges them for suppressing the truth. So long rejecting the truth. He allows them to believe the lie, the deception. We find that in a number of places in the Bible. Let me give you one example. It's in 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Does the Bible teach this? Yes, it does. Lots of places. Listen to this. This is a, an event that's going to take place and as I think has already started in our world. It says in verse 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 10 and with all righteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. There's the problem. They did not receive the love of the truth. They didn't want it. For this reason God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Terrible that they may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. God judges them by causing them to believe a lie. If you read verse 9, he's talking of course about an event that will actually take place. The coming of the lawless one, the antichrist. It says, who will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth at the second coming. He will destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with power, signs, and listen to this, and lying wonders. Satan will perform great lying wonders and will deceive many. Friends, the whole world is under his sway. He blinds the minds already. But here this is a particular judgment on the world where God says they, they didn't want the truth, they rejected the truth, so I will allow them to believe the lie. You know, there are some that will never believe. They'll never believe. That could be you listening today. You'll never believe. Why not? Because you refuse to receive the truth. You don't want the truth. Examine yourself. Do you want to know the truth? The truth can be painful. Truth can hurt. Truth, do you really want me to tell you the truth? Uh, you know what? People should have around them friends who are honest, who tell them the truth. You don't want people just telling you a lot of nonsense about yourself. You want people who are honest and truthful. Say it as it is. And if you've got faults, and if you've made mistakes, you want them to, to tell you. Not to just ignore it. Oh, there's nothing like a friend to tell you the truth. Oh, but these are people that rather would have the lie, would rather have people around them that would just make them feel good. 
Don't tell me the truth. Oh, to everyone who says, well, I, I put it like this, to everyone who says that this gospel or this Bible or this message that we preach is just all rubbish. I get that many times. It's all rubbish, you know. It's all false. I don't believe it. I don't believe in Jesus. I, I don't believe a word of it. It's nonsense. Well, I'll, I always answer them like this. Well, I say this to them. Remember this conversation. I say to them, because one day you will. One day you will know it's true. But it'll be too late then. And they look at me a bit aghast and say, no, no, that'll never happen. I said, no, it's going to happen. I guarantee it's going to happen. You will know that the gospel is true. The Bible says you'll know it when you're on your knees before Jesus. Because the Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Everyone will do it, but not everyone will be saved. Oh, it'll be too late for you then. You'll know it's true when you see him coming on the clouds of heaven. When you see him sitting on his judgment throne. But it will be too late. You did not receive the truth. You rather rejected it and believed the lie. Do you know what the devil's greatest lie is? Oh, he's got many lies. His greatest lie is this. You don't need a saviour, he'll tell you. You don't need this Christianity. It's all a load of nonsense. It's all rubbish. That's why he has so much nonsense in amongst the true. That's why he has the cults. He's the author of them. That's why he has all the faults. In other words, to put you off. And you look at it and you say, well, it's all nonsense. But you're not examining it all. You're just rejecting the faults. There's true in there. Oh, there's a lot of rubbish about. There's a lot of false about. You can see that. You don't need to be a genius to see that some of these people are false. Jesus says you'll know them by their fruits. Examine their lives. Examine the way they live. What they do. Don't just listen to what they say. But look at what they do. There are false prophets who will deceive many. But oh, you want the truth. Well, the devil comes and he gives you this message and he, he says, you're not that bad. This is the false prophet. You're not a bad person, really. Oh, you're not a sinner. He won't even mention that. Oh, the devil is a liar. He keeps the truth from you. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 8 in the, in the New Testament, it puts it like this, John's letter, in the, we quoted chapter 5 in chapter 1, he says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. People are self-deceived, and the truth is not in us. You don't have the truth if you say you're not a sinner. You're, 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 you're deceived, and you're deceiving yourself. Here is the truth. Do you want the truth? Do you want it? It's not pleasant, it's not palatable. Well, I tell you, we've been saying it week after week. Here is the truth. We are all sinners. We're all sinners. We're lost and heading to hell. That's the truth. We are born in sin. We are born under the wrath of God. We are not pure. We are not perfect. And God is. And God did make this world. And God did create this world. But man has rebelled and has sinned against God. We're fallen. That is the truth. All the world is guilty before God. There's nobody righteous. There's nobody that hasn't sinned. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We are all condemned. That is the truth. There's no way we saw last week for us to get to heaven as we are. We can't go. As on our own, there isn't a chance. But here's the truth of the gospel. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's the truth. Paul declares it. I'm not ashamed of this gospel of Jesus Christ. I declare the truth to you. I declare it. I am not lying. My conscience bears witness. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. This is a faithful and a true message. He came to die on a cross to save us. Listen to, to Charles Wesley. I want to quote you some hymns by Charles Wesley. Listen to what he says. And there's two I like here. Listen to these words. He says, O love divine, what hast thou done 
What have you done? What have you done, Lord? The immortal God has died for me. The Father's co-eternal Son bore all my sins upon the tree. The immortal God for me has died. My Lord, my love is crucified. Behold him, you that pass him by, the bleeding prince of life. Come on, look at the cross. Come, sinners, see your maker die. This is the true gospel. Your creator on the cross dying for you. And say was ever love like his. Say was ever grief like his. Come, feel with me his blood applied. My Lord, my love is crucified. Now listen to this third verse. It's crucified for me and for you. To bring us rebels back to God. This is the truth. Believe, believe. The record is true. The gospel is true. You are now bought by Jesus' blood. You've got to believe it's true. In order to receive it. Oh God grant you to believe it. Let me quote his conversion hymn. Do you remember this? And can it be, he said, that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood? Died he for me, for me or him, to death pursued? I caused his pain. I caused him to die on the cross. Amazing love. How can it be that thou, my God, should die for me? Oh, what a truth that is. Oh, he left his father's throne above, so free, so infinite his grace, emptied himself of all but love and bled for Adam's helpless race. Here's the truth. He bled for the human race, for a fallen world. Tis mercy all immense and free. Listen to this. For oh my God, it found out me. I was convinced of it. Totally convinced. Oh, the Holy Spirit's got to do that. He's got to work in us. He's got to reveal this truth to us, and we know it's true. Christians haven't got blind faith. They don't just say, well, I believe the Bible's true. Nonsense. Nobody would expect anybody to do that. Nobody in their right mind would do that. Just because the Bible says it, I believe it. Nonsense. That's not faith. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. The substance of things hoped for. It's supernatural. It's the gift of God. And when you believe, you know, you know it's true. And you can't define it. You can't explain it. Jesus said it. You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. You shall be free indeed. It's like somehow waking up from a dark sleep. And suddenly there's a light. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Well, listen again to 1 John chapter 5. It were, it's worth repeating. He says, and we know that the Son of God has come. Notice the language. Now, this is a Christian writing. We know this is true, this gospel. And I'm telling you, I don't believe it's true. I know it's true. I don't believe I'm going to heaven. I know I'm going to heaven. This is Christianity. It's to bring you to a place of certainty. How do you know? Because it's true. And God has convinced me of the truth. Oh, we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. Notice, a revelation, an understanding. That we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God. This is the true God and eternal life. Do you know? Can you say that? In the language of the Apostle John. Has God given you an understanding? Do you know him who is true? Are you in him who is true? Have you believed upon him? Is Jesus your saviour? Do you know the truth? This is the true God, he says, and eternal life. Oh, Jesus prayed it. He said, this is eternal life. John 17, verse 3. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you said. That's life eternal, to know the only true God. There's only one God. And there's only one mediator between God and man, and that's the man, Jesus Christ, who is both God and man. God grant you to know him. Who is true. The only true God. Remember what. This gospel teaches. 
Oh, he teaches us, I, I leave it with you, that this, he declares it like this, this is the truth. This is the truth about God. This is the truth about heaven, about hell. This is the truth about life beyond this world. This is the truth. A God who cannot lie. Believe, believe this is true. When you stand in a court of law, do you remember what they do? They ask you to put your hand on the Bible and say, I promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That's so important. You can, you can distinguish the false teachers and the cults on those three things. Some of them will say, they don't even say the truth, but they can, some, they have the truth. It's got to be the truth or it's a lie. Well, they've got the truth. But is it the whole truth? They leave out stuff. It's not the whole truth. If it's not the whole truth in a court of law, it's a lie. There are some religions and some denominations and they'll have the truth and they'll have the whole truth. And yet it's still a lie. It's still a deception. It's not the truth. Oh, there are many denominations that believe Jesus is the Son of God, believe in his incarnation, his virgin birth, his death on the cross, his resurrection, and yet they still preach a lie. Why? Because they've got the truth, they've got the whole truth, but they miss the third bit. And nothing but the truth. You don't add anything to this. Nothing but the truth. You have to say that in a legal court of law. If, you, if it's not nothing but the truth, it's a lie. If you add anything or take anything away, it's got to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You don't want to believe a lie, I'm sure. Am I speaking to you today? You don't want to be deceived. You don't want to be self-deceived. So many believe the lie. And I suppose they'll not be convinced by me or anyone else, but they will be convinced on that great day when the truth of God will be revealed for all to see. I tell you, the Bible is 100% accurate and everything it says will come to pass. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. My words will never pass away. They will be fulfilled. Why are we so sure? Because they've already been 100% accurate so far. Why? Because it's the truth. God cannot lie when he says it. He means it. It will be so. Jesus has a saying in the Gospels. He, he goes like this. Most assuredly. Most assuredly. The old day of it says verily, verily. Most certainly. I say to you. Oh, he speaks with authority. The authority of God. And he doesn't just say, I want to tell you something that's true. He says, listen, when I speak most assuredly, most definitely, I am telling you the truth. Believe me. God cannot lie. This is the truth. So many miss it. Oh, don't miss it, my friend. Don't miss it. God grant that you would know the truth. That you would know Jesus Christ, who is the truth. I am the truth. He is the only true God and eternal life. Amen. May God bless his word to you today. If you want to join me in a prayer, if there's anyone there today who needs to call upon the Lord, well, let me lead you in a prayer. Let's pray. Lord, I need to hear the truth. I need to know the truth. I do believe you are the truth. The way, the truth and the life. You are a God that cannot lie. I therefore believe the gospel is true. And I believe that I am a sinner, as your word says. And I believe that you came into this world, as the gospel says, to save sinners. I repent of my sin. I believe in you now. I believe that you are the only true God, the only way to heaven. I believe in you now as my Lord and my God and my Saviour. Amen.
Amen. Well, may God bless his word to you. We've done two parts of this verse. We're going to come back, God willing, next time and look at the life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we can give a preview, can't we? Do you know the life? Have you got the life? But let's leave it there today. May God help you to know the truth and the truth will set you free. God bless you, whatever you are. Amen.